So I want to take a few seconds to um, talk about the similarities and differences between the intermediate value theorem and the mean value theorem. Teach you um, what each theorem is and, and how they work, and then give you some uh, tips and tricks to help you keep them straight in your head. Um, because they do say two very different things, but they are similar in a lot of ways. So we're first going to talk about the intermediate value theorem. And, and when you hear the word intermediate, um, my brain automatically goes to the phrase beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And intermediate is between beginner and advanced. And that's kind of what the intermediate value theorem says. It talks about a number that is between two other numbers. So here is the actual theorem, and then we'll kind of break it down into its smaller parts. If f is a function that is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, where the output at A does not equal the output of B, we can say that there is a, a number N between these two outputs, such that, um, there is an, such that there is at least one number C in the open interval A to B for which the output of C is equal to N. So that's a lot, and, and it's a little overwhelming the first time you see it. But if you think about it in terms of a picture, let's give you a visual for the intermediate value theorem. If we have this person walking up the mountainside and they are making their way up the mountain, whether they go up, down, sideways in circles, it doesn't matter. If they start at 2,000 meters and go to 5,000 meters, they must cross through, they must reach an altitude of 3,765.6 meters assuming that they're not airlifted for any portion of this mountain, that they are making contact with the mountain the entire time, there's the continuous part, they have to cross through this, this altitude at some point in time. So that's, that's what the intermediate value theorem says. If I have A and B on my x-axis, and the output of the function at A is not equal to the output of the function at B, then we can let n, capital N, be any output between f of a and f of b. All right, any output between. And what we're saying is that as long as this is a continuous function, there has to be at least one number c, at least one, between a and b, such that the output of c is equal to n, and n is between the output of a and b. So intermediate says it falls between two other values. And the reason that this thing has to be continuous, we talked about getting airlifted up the mountain, but let's say that there was a discontinuity in this function. And let's say that discontinuity happened right at C here. Then it's not a guarantee that F of C equals N because F of C would be undefined because of this discontinuity, because of this jump in the graph. So that's why it's important that we set the condition that the function is continuous. Okay, now if we compare this to the mean value theorem, the mean value theorem says this, if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, so that sounds very familiar, but now we're talking about a function that is differentiable on an open interval from a to b, then we're saying there exists a c somewhere between a and b, which is again very similar to the intermediate value theorem, such that the average rate of change between a and b is exactly the same as f prime of c, or the instantaneous rate of change at c. So here, think of the word mean. Mean means average. So what we're doing is we're finding this average rate of change here, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and we're saying that that average rate of change is equivalent to an instantaneous rate of change somewhere between those two values of a and b. Now, let's take a look at a picture for this. So here's our continuous function in pink. And what we have is we have a on the x-axis, we have b on the x-axis, and we have c somewhere in between a and b. Now, what we're saying is if I take the slope of the secant line between A and B, which is the average rate of change between A and B, that that slope, whatever that value is, has to be found somewhere else on that function uh, to a tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line at C is going to be the exact same thing as the slope of the tangent line or the slope of the secant line 
from A to B. And that is what the mean value theorem says. There exists a C somewhere between A and B such that uh, F prime of C, the slope of the tangent line at C, is equivalent to the slope of the secant line between A and B. And that's the difference between the two theorems.